Marley was dead to begin with. There is no doubt whatever about that. Old Marley was as dead as a doornail. Mind, I don't mean to say that I know, of my own knowledge, what there is particularly dead about a doornail. I might have been inclined myself to regard a coffin nail as the deadest piece of ironmongery in the trade. But the wisdom of our ancestors is in the simile and my unhallowed hands shall not disturb it, or the country's done for. You will therefore permit me to repeat, emphatically, old Marley was as dead as a doornail. There is no doubt that Marley was dead. This must be distinctly understood, or nothing wonderful can come of the story I'm going to relate. Once upon a time, of all the good days in the year, on Christmas Eve, old Scrooge sat busy in his counting house. Scrooge positioned himself strategically so that he might keep his eye upon his clerk, who was copying letters. It is this very counting house that you will be transported to next. It is my most sincere wish that you witness the events that ensue with a keen eye and an open heart. Oh, a Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Ah, humbug. What? Christmas a humbug, Uncle? You don't mean that, I'm sure. I do. What right have you to be merry? What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Come now, what right have you to be so dismal? What reason have you to be so morose? You're rich enough. Bah, humbug. Don't be cross, Uncle. What else can I be when I live in such a world of fools as this? Merry Christmas, out upon Merry Christmas. What's Christmas time to you but a time for paying your bills without money? A time for finding yourself a year older and not an hour richer? A time for balancing your books and finding every item in them through a round dozen of months presented dead against you? If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a stake of folly through his heart. He should. Uncle! Nephew! Keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it. Who let me leave it alone then? Much good may it do you, much good it has ever done you. There are many things from which I might have derived good by which I've not profited, I dare say. Christmas among the rest. But I have always seen Christmas as a very good time. A kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. The only one that I know of in the long calendar of the year where men and women are decent to one another. And so therefore, Uncle, although it has never put a single scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that has done me good and will continue to do me good. And I say, God bless it. Let me hear another sound from you and you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. You're quite a powerful speaker, sir. I wonder you don't go into Parliament. Don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. I'll dine with you as soon as hell freezes over. Why ever not? Why did you get married? Why? Because I fell in love. Because you fell in love. Good afternoon. But, Uncle... I said good afternoon. I ask nothing of you. Why can't we be Good afternoon. I'm sorry. With all my heart. But I shall keep my Christmas humor to the last. 
and wish you a very Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good afternoon. And Happy New Year. Good Christmas. afternoon. Oh, thank you, Mr. Kraft. And very Merry Christmas to you, sir. And Merry Christmas to you, too. Oh, excuse me, sir. Scrooge and Marley, I believe, have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge and Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. He died seven years ago this very night. Well, we have no doubt that his liberality is well represented by his surviving partner. At this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, it is very desirable that we should make slight provisions for the poor and destitute who suffer greatly at the present time. Thousands are in need of common necessities. Hundreds of thousands are in want of common comfort, sir. Are there no prisons? Well, plenty of prisons. Then the Union Workhouse is in order then? They still are. I wish I could say they were not. Good. From what you had said, I saw, thought something had happened to stop them in their useful course. I'm very glad to hear it. Well, a few of us are endeavoring to raise a fund to buy the poor means of food, drink, and warmth. We choose this time because it is a time of all others when want is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. What shall we put you down for? Nothing. You wish to be anonymous? I wish to be left alone. Since you asked what I wanted, that is my answer. I support the institutions that I mentioned. They cost enough, and those who are badly off must go there. Well, many can't go there, and many would rather die. If they'd rather die, then they'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. Good afternoon, gentlemen. You want all day tomorrow, I suppose. If that's quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient, and it's not fair. If I was to stop half a crown for it, you'd think yourself ill-used, I'll be bound. And yet you don't think me ill-used for paying a day's wages for no work. Christmas only comes around once a year, sir. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. But I suppose you must have the whole day. Be here all the earlier next morning. Thank you, sir. your senses. Because the littlest thing affects them. A slight disorder of the stomach makes them cheats. You might be an undigested bit of beef, a blot of mustard, a fragment of an underdone potato. There's more of gravy than of grave about you. <laughs> oh! oh, spirit, why do you come to me? Wear the chain I forged in life. 
I made it link by link and yard by yard. I guttered it on my own free will, and of my own free will I wore it. Is this patchel strange to you? Or would you know the full weight and length of the strong coil you bear yourself? It was as full as heaven as long as this seven Christmas Eves ago. You have labored on it since. It is a ponderous chain. Oh, Jacob. Jacob, speak comfort to me, Jacob. I have none to give you. It is carried by other regions and is conveyed by other kinds of ministers to other kinds of men. Nor could I tell you what I would. Very little more is all permitted to me. I cannot rest. I cannot stay. I cannot linger anywhere. My spirit never walked beyond our counting house. Mark me! No. In life, my spirit never rolled beyond the narrow limits of a money-changing hole. Weary journeys lie before me. But you were always a good man of business, Jacob. That's all I was. Why do you come to me? I've come here tonight to warn you that you may have yet a chance in hope of escaping my fate. You will be haunted by three spirits. Uh, Expect the first tomorrow night before the bell tolls one. Uh, Expect the second upon the next night at the same hour. <laughs> the third upon the next night when the last stroke of twelve has ceased to vibrate. Look to see me no more. And look that for your own sake you remember what has passed between us. Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold me? I am. Who? And what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. Oh. Oh! Spirit, I was apprenticed here. <laughs> Yo, ho, Ebenezer! <laughs> no more work tonight. Christmas, Ebenezer. Wait. It's old Fezziwig, bless his heart. It's Fezziwig alive again. Clear away, clear away, my lad. matter to make these silly folks so full of gratitude. What is the matter? No, nothing. I would like to say a word or two to my clock just now, that's all. Take my hand. Hmm? Yeah. It matters little to you, very little. Another idol has displaced me, and if it can cheer and comfort you in time to come, as I would have tried to do, I have no just cause to grieve. What idol has displaced you? 
a golden one. You've changed. You fear the world too much. I have seen your nobler aspirations fall off one by one until the master passion gain engrosses you. I have changed in some ways, perhaps, but I have not changed towards you. Have I? We loved one another when we were both poor and content to be so. Yes, you are changed. Not so long ago, it seems, you were another man. I was a boy. We thought money promised happiness when we were one in heart, and it is clear it only brings misery now that we are two. Tell me, would you seek me out and try to win me now? Do you doubt it? I would gladly think otherwise if I could. But if you were free today, yesterday, tomorrow, can even I believe that you would choose a woman without a dowry? You who, even in your affections, weigh everything by gain, or if for a moment you were false enough to your one guiding principle, to do so, choose her. No, and I choose to release you. With a full heart, and for the love of him you once were, may you be happy in the life you've chosen. Give it. Show me no more. No. One shadow more. No more, no more. Show me no more. <sighs> I saw an old friend of yours this afternoon. Mr. Scrooge? Mr. Scrooge it was. I passed his office window, and as it was not shut up, and he had a candle in sight, I could scarcely help seeing him. His friend lies upon the point of death, I hear. And there he sat alone. Quite alone in this world, I do believe. Spirit, remove me from this place. Haunt me no longer. of Christmas presents. You have never seen the likes of me before. Never. Spirit, conduct me where you will. Touch my robe. Christmas won't be the same without Martha here, will it, my dears? Happy Christmas, Father. Martha! <laughs> and how did little Tim behave? As good as gold, and better. He told me, coming home, that he hoped the people had seen him in the church because he was a cripple, and he thought it would be pleasant for them to think upon Christmas Day and remember who had made lame beggars walk and blind men see. <laughs> Isn't any better. Well, how could you the most that you can then? Dear Martha is home. Surely that is for something. A Merry Christmas to us all. Shall we pray before we eat? God bless us. God bless us. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat by the poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner. Carefully preserved. Oh no, spit it. Say he will be spared. What then? If he be like to die, then he shall do it and decrease the surplus population. Man, if man you be in heart, not adamant, forbear that wicked can't until discovered what the surplus is 
and where it is. Shall you decide what men shall live and what men shall die? It may be that in sight of heaven, you are more worthless and less fit to live than those like this poor man's child. Mr. Scrooge, I give you Mr. Scrooge, the founder of this feast. The founder of the feast indeed. I wish I had it here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon and I'd hope he'd have a good appetite for it. My dear, the children, it's Christmas. I'll drink to his health for your sake in the days, not for his. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. Uncle Ebenezer. He said that Christmas was a humbug, as I live. He believed it too. More shame for him, Fred. Oh, he's a comical old fellow. Not quite as pleasant as he may seem. However, his offenses carry their own punishment. I have nothing to say against him. I'm sure he's very rich, Fred. At least he always tells me so. Oh, what a fat, my dear Mary. He has no use for it. He doesn't do any good with it, and he doesn't make himself comfortable with it. He hasn't even the pleasure of thinking he's ever going to benefit us with it. I have no patience with him. Oh, I have, and I'm sorry for him. I couldn't be angry with him if I tried. Who suffers by his ill whims? Himself, always, here. So he takes it into his head to dislike us, and he won't come and dine with us. What's the consequence? I think he loses a very good dinner. Quite true. <laughs> well, I'm very glad to hear that, my dear. Oh, my dear old Uncle Ebenezer may rail at Christmas until the day he dies, but I shall visit him in good temper year after year, saying, Uncle Scrooge, how are you? If it only puts him in the vein to give his poor clerk 50 pounds, that's something. I think I shook him yesterday. <laughs> oh, a Merry Christmas to the old man, whatever he may be. He wouldn't take it from me, but may he have it nevertheless. Uncle Scrooge. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uncle Scrooge. My time on earth is short. I must leave you. But spirit, I've yet to see all that the present has to offer. You are about to show me things that have not happened, but will happen. Is that so, Spirit? Spirit, I fear you more than any I have seen. But since I know your purpose is to do me good, I will follow you and do it with an open heart. Will you not speak to me? about it. Oh, that is dead. That is a doornail in what you say. Well, whatever happens to his money? I haven't heard. Hasn't gone anywhere that'll do any good. Mm. It's likely to be a very cheap funeral, for upon my life I can't think of anyone to go to it. <laughs> perhaps you and I should make him a party and uh, volunteer. In his own estate, perhaps. Before we ransack the place for anything it's worth. <laughs> ransack, ransack, ransack. Hush now, child. I like funerals. There's always food. As if your mother here doesn't feed you enough. <laughs> this Friday suit you. Suits me fine. <laughs> Oi! I was only thinking on it. I wasn't going to do it. Sure you were. Come on. Father should be home soon, pet. Father's been walking much slower lately, Mother. I have known him to walk with. I have known him to walk with Tiny Tim upon his shoulder. Very fast indeed. But he was very light to carry and he was never any trouble for your father. Here's father now.
Not Tiny Tim. Oh, no, no, spirit. Take me from this place. I can't bear it. Spirit, before I draw nearer to that stirred, would you point out to me this question? Are these the shadows of the things that will be, or the shadows of the things that may be only? No, no spirit, no spirit, spirit, hear me. I, I am not the man I was. Uh, why show me these things if I am past all hope? Spirit. Your nature intercedes for me and pities me. Assure me that I may yet assuage these shadows by an altered life. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. I will live in the past, the present, and the, and the future. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm alive. I'm alive. In my own room. In my own bed. Oh. Jacob Marley, heaven in the Christmas time be praised for this. <laughs> I'm as light as a fellow. <laughs> I'm, as, I'm as manly as a schoolboy. <laughs> a Merry Christmas. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. You talking to me? Yes. Hello, boy. What is today? It's Christmas Day. It's Christmas Day. I, I haven't missed it. It's Christmas Day. Hello, my fine fellow. Do you know the poulterer in the next block but one? Do you know if they still have the big turkey hanging in the window? Not the little turkey, the big one. You mean the one that's as big as me? <laughs> it's, hang it's, it's hanging up there now. Oh, is it really? Well, go and buy it. No, go buy it and tell him not to bring it here, but take it to the house of Bob Cratchit. Here's, here's half a crown for you. Oh, boy. Ha, 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 ha! Bob Cratchit shan't know who sent it. <laughs> Hello, my fine lady. How are you today? I hope you were successful yesterday. It was very kind of you. And a uh, uh, Merry Christmas, madam. Mr. Scrooge? Uh, uh, yes. Uh... My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? Such generosity. Uh, don't say anything. Uh, uh, come and see me. Will you come and see me? I will. Uh, thank you and bless you 50 times. Thank you. Merry Christmas. What do you mean by coming here at this time of day? I'm very sorry, sir. I'm behind my time. Yes, I think you are. Step right this way, sir. Yeah. I tell you what, my friend. I'm not going to put up with this any longer. It's only once a year, sir. It will not be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday, sir. I tell you what, my friend. I'm not going to put up with this any longer. And therefore, therefore, I am about to raise your salary. A Merry Christmas, Bob. A Merry Christmas, Bob, that I've given you a million year. I will raise your salary, and I will assist to help your struggling family, and we'll discuss the matter this very afternoon. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew, or any other good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. It was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well.
if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us and all of us. God bless us, everyone. Oh, God.